Bonjour gamers, how are you guys doing today? Cody here, and today I want to talk about what I do to make gold. Now I had touched on this in a previous video, which I'll leave linked in the description box, but I realized this is a video series I kind of want to make videos on as things progress because things do change, things become go up in value, uh, and so I want to talk about what I'm currently doing to make money on my account. But before we jump into it, like the video if you like it, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. We're going to be doing a giveaway for a $100 Steam gift card at 15k subscribers. And turn on that notification bell if you guys want to be notified of whenever I post. Lastly, check me out on Twitch. I stream Monday to Friday starting at 3pm Eastern Standard Time. So if you guys enjoy the content here, you will absolutely love it over there. If you guys hear my voice right now, I am already live, so click that link in the description box. Now let's just jump into it. So the first things I want to touch on is the pretty straightforward stuff. In case you are new and watching this, uh, I'm going to go over the th basic things that make you money on your account. The first thing to look at if you are new to the game is just go after masterpieces. They give a ton of gold, are pretty easy to get for the most part, and I believe are a mechanic in the game to help fresh accounts get started off and start building up their bankroll. The second thing to start off your account to start earning a lot of gold is complete the Guardian Raid questline. Now I have a video I made on how this works, how to start it and everything. I will leave that linked in the description box down below as well. But it's pretty simple. You follow a questline, you go to a bunch of different islands, you kill Guardians and you're good to go. You make about like 5 to 6 k gold and it leads you all the way up until like I'm pretty sure like past Descaluda. Now the last two things that are super important you are doing whenever they are up is A, your gold islands. I ironically have one today, so I can show it to you guys, but you'll notice here when you go over to three islands, uh, Opportunity Isle is actually offering gold. Usually at least twice a week, there's gonna be gold islands. These will award between like 700, uh, to even believe up to like 900 gold for completing them. That's a lot of extra gold that you get just for doing an island that takes like five minutes. You wanna make sure you never ever miss these. The second thing is your chaos gates. We do not have any right now, but chaos gates are very important to be running. Uh, you want to run these whenever they are up. They award you maps. You then just, after the Chaos Gate, in that area you're going to see chat is going to be filled with a bunch of people running Chaos Gates. You just LFG, link your map, join up with other people who have the exact same map as you, and then you just run them all together. It's very, very fast and a very good source of gold because it awards shard bags, and shard bags sell for a ton. Right now, what I would suggest is that if you are new to the game, I would say run T2 Chaos Gates. So that way you can get any variation of the life shard pouches and then sell them for gold. Lastly, your Unas tasks. Whenever you complete Unas tasks, this bar is going to fill up whenever you do your dailies and weeklies. You're going to want to make sure you clear this out every single week because you can redeem these tokens for gold chests. These gold chests give you gold bars and raw gold. I always like to buy the large gold chest. The difference in this is that uh, it pretty much is either you get consistent gold in the first and second option, or you go Gamba and you go big and try to get the giant gold bar, which is worth 10k gold. I personally like always going for the large gold chest because I like to Gamba. If you ever hit it, you're going to be really, really happy. And I mean, why are we playing this game if not to risk and Gamba a little bit? You know what I mean? All right, now that we've spoken about that, I want to talk about what I specifically do to make gold. Now, you guys are going to notice, and this is kind of like the inspiration for the video, I don't do anything crazy. I don't do any flipping. I just kind of play the game and play all my characters, and I make gold from that. Now, a thing I've noticed from playing the game over a long period of time is that the more characters I had, the less down horrific on gold I was. I realized by honing properly, by building up my account of six, and playing my characters uh, efficiently, you just kind of make gold just naturally and passively. Um, you don't have to play all six characters every day, but I do want to stress the importance of having a full roster in this game. So the first thing I do that makes me a lot of money is the way I hone. What I do is I either hone my weapon exclusively or I hone my armor exclusively, and I get them to checkpoints that I need to like get through content. What this means, and what this does, is that let's say when I was going for 1445, I hone my weapon to plus 17 first. This allowed me to sell Guardian Stones. I sold all my Guardian Stones while I was waiting for my weapon to hit plus 17, and then once my weapon hit plus 17, I started to hone my armor, and then I started to be able to sell Destruction Stones. This makes a very, very good flow of gold for your account. So far, this hasn't bit me in the butt, but obviously when you first switch, let's say, from weapon to armor or armor to weapon, you are going to be down horrific on Guardians and Destructions, but that's fine. Even if for a couple days you are bottlenecked by Destructions or Guardians, or even for like a full week, it doesn't matter because eventually you will be bottlenecked by greater honor leap stones or by shards. So no matter what, it will always catch up because you get way more guardians and you get way more destructions than you do leap stones, especially with all the events we've gotten, you will always end up catching up on leap stones because 
that's the most expensive resource. The next thing you can do for money is gems. Now, I've been doing this just to get level 7 gems on my main, but this would be a very good source of gold. Pretty much every single day, I do six sets of, of Chaos Dungeons. I do all my characters' Chaos Dungeons, unless there's a couple days where I'm, I'm busy doing some other stuff, I'll let them rest, it's not the end of the world. But for the most part, I try to get all six Chaos Dungeons done for my entire roster. This means that in a week, I get a lot of gems from the Chaos Dungeons themselves, and I get a lot of boss rush tickets. Usually, every single character does at least one boss rush. This generates a lot of gems from my account. I pretty much am able to get consistently guaranteed at least one level 7 gem a week, and then sometimes I'm able to even get two level 7 gems every single week. That's really good, because if I didn't use these for my character, I'd be able to sell them for about 10k each, which is a lot of gold. Getting an extra 10k gold that is just completely free for just playing your account is really, really important and has a huge impact on your bankroll. The next thing that's important to mention is life skilling. Now, in my previous video, I spoke about how excavating was worth a lot of money. Excavating is down pretty bad. It hasn't really ever gone up, and I don't know if it's ever going to go up because of the fact that there are so many bots. In Korea, we use excavating to uh, build your fusion materials. In NA, we actually use fish because this is so heavily botted. This means excavating mats might not really ever go up too, too much. However, hunting has recently become quite profitable. The reason for this is because people actually use food now. With the release of Hard Mode Vaulton, people are actually using a lot of food, and so hunting has become a very good source of income. Now, I plan on making a guide uh, about hunting and how to do it, uh, how you wanna set up your tools and stuff, but I would highly recommend getting into hunting because everything is on the rise and it makes a good amount of money. Now, once you've hunted, what should you do with your materials? I would not recommend crafting food with them as of now. The reason for this is that if you actually run the math, uh, as of now on NAE servers, you end up breaking even. When you calculate the cost of all the materials and then the crafting cost, uh, you end up breaking even on the food and you actually end up losing a little bit of money because there is a listing fee when you put this on the auction house and so that 5% actually has you losing money instead of just selling the materials raw. However, it might not always be this way. The reason for this is because when Vaulton released, there was a period for a couple of weeks after his release where you could literally buy all these materials and you would actually make money crafting this. Even if you bought every single piece, including the crafting cost and including the listing fee, you actually just made money crafting this feast. So keep that in mind. This might change when Vicus comes out because people will again be trying to progress through content. And so people will be going through uh, food very, very fast because you lose this every single time you die. And we're going to be dying a lot when Big Titty Mo Goth Mommy comes out. Now, before I jump into the importance of your roster, and I kind of want to touch on even just how you build your roster is important because spending your money is important in making your money. Uh, don't miss your weekly lockouts. I think this is pretty obvious. Do all of your Abyssal Dungeons, do your Argoses, run your Vaultins, do your weekly content. This all awards gold and is super important that you should be doing. This goes without saying, make sure you are not missing any single piece of weekly content that awards gold. Now, this is the last thing I want to touch on, and this is something I mentioned in a lot of videos. I feel like the way you hone your account and build your account is crucial in how much money you make. The most foundational thing is you should never hold back your main character. Sometimes people want to park their character at 1400, they'll park their character at 1415, but they'll park their character to hone up alts. And I don't really feel like that's worth it because you're still spending money. If you need to park your character to just sell mats in general, I think that's fine because sometimes you do need to recoup some gold to push forward. I've done it when I hit 1415, I took a small break. I sold mats for like a day or two. When I hit 1445, I did the same thing. And then I continued pushing my main. But I never ever held back the progression of my main character to build up an alt. To me, no matter what, this just never seems worth it. Because getting your main pushed is important. Getting to content as soon as it releases is important. People who are able to do Vault and Hard early on, it's important. People who can do the 1445 Chaos Dungeon early on, it's important. Because you are giving yourself more roles on jewelry. You're giving yourself more access to higher uh, generated gold. It's always important to push your main. And it could allow you to eventually catch up and actually get ready for future content. My character is already 1460 and I'm going to keep pushing her. I'm going to push her to 1475 and that is probably where she will plateau for a little bit. And then from that point, I will start pushing up my alts because my character is not just at a point where she's at current content. She is ready for future content. And so leaving her somewhere is fine because she, she has some leeway. And so then bringing alts up to a different level makes a lot more sense. 
A big way I do this is I never ever hone on my alts with unbound materials. If a character hits tier 3, I'll get them to 1340, because 1340 doesn't really take that many materials, it's pretty easy, especially with the honing uh, stronghold buff. But after that, they have to get to 1370 with their own bound materials, and they will not push past 1370. I know my Zerker is 1385, but I main swapped to Glavier, and so this is just where the Zerker stopped when they announced Glavier. But if it wasn't for that, he would be 1370, and all these characters would just sit at 1370. Now, once we get the 1460 Stronghold Honing buff, which I assume is going to be coming out with Vicus, then that's when I would start pushing some characters to 1400 or even 1415. But never if I'm trying to hone my main character. I feel like it's very difficult to hone multiple characters at the same time, especially once your characters are in Tier 3, because besides just the material cost, the Gold Sink, the Silver Sink, everything starts to get very, very expensive. And so like honing on a character is a huge investment of your gold. Another thing that I feel like is very important to mention is don't be afraid to rest your characters. I know not everyone has time to play six characters a day, and that's fine. But if you're trying to play three characters a day and it's not allowing you to like build up the rest of your roster because you only have enough time to do three sets of guardians and three sets of whatever, let your alts rest. If you have two T3 or three, three tier three characters, let's say you have three characters you're playing, and then you have characters in T1 and in T2, but you don't have your six person roster made, let those characters rest and start building up the rest of your roster. You can rest some Guardian Raids, rest some Chaos Dungeons, if it means that you can do story on another character, if that means you can do the tier one or tier two tower that night. It's more important to build up the roster and let other players rest because realistically you don't really lose that much from one day or two days or 10 days or however much rest you give them because you're still only, you lose like 30%, right? You're losing 33% and then you still get a ton the next day. But getting that full roster is important. Now, I don't know how many people struggle with this, but I do think it's something that's important to mention is that you are limited by day on how much you can hone on your character. If your character is close to a tap, or you're about to get a tap, or whatever it is, and it wouldn't really make a difference if you get it today, it wouldn't really make a difference if you get it tomorrow, don't buy the mats to keep tapping. It gets very, very expensive when you start kind of wailing out without wailing out on your account. Obviously, if you're like literally at a pity tap, and that would be the difference between like 1415, you know, 14, four, uh, 12 or 1415, get that tap. That's an important tap to get because that means you get an extra reset. That means you get extra gold from your Runa's tasks. That's important. But if you're just pushing for 1445 and it makes no difference if you're going from 13, uh, 1435 to 1437, don't spend gold on that tap. Just sit on your gold. It doesn't mean you have to be a dragon and hold your gold forever, but there are also other ways of investing in your character. Maybe you can invest in gems. Maybe you can invest slowly in legendary engraving books. There is other ways to invest in your character, even starting to get some relic or jewelry or whatever the hell it is. Even investing in your alts, building your alts makes the game a lot more fun to play. Invest in your account and invest in your character that isn't just gear score. And that's really, really important because when you stop trying to hone off of your gold, I feel like you will probably be saving a lot more gold. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section down below. If you guys want to share what you guys do to make money. Uh, if I didn't have it in this video, if you guys feel comfortable sharing it, obviously, I would love to hear on the things that you guys do to make some cash on your account. Uh, because it would help me, you know, obviously progress my account and help other people who read the comment section. As always, if you liked the video, make sure to like it. Sub to the channel. It helps support me a ton. Check me out on Twitch. If you're hearing me right now, I am already live. And make sure to join the community discord it's filled with a bunch of amazing people if you're looking for people to hang out with chat with this lost circuit that is definitely the place you want to be i'll catch you guys tomorrow have a wonderful day lie lie